Hey guys, welcome to my real ESRKin installation tutorial. In this video, you're gonna learn how to install this AI onto your local Windows machine. And if you don't have a Windows or if you don't have big enough CUDA, a big enough CUDA, uh, if you don't have enough VRAM to run this AI, you can try to head over to their collab instead. And this is their official repo and I will be using my copy here instead. I've wrote some specific scripts that will make um, running these uh, easier for you. So I'll only be linking my copy down in the description. So yeah, let's get started. Started. There are two ways that you can run. The first way is to run through the Windows executable files that they provided officially. And the other way is to install and run it through CUDA and PyTorch. So I'll be showing you how to run exe right now, and then I'll show you how to run on CUDA and PyTorch later. So here I basically wrote how long you roughly need compared to um, running in CUDA. So it's a one to four ratio around one image on Vulkan can run four images on CUDA. So it's really up to you. If you don't have a CUDA or if you want to run something in higher resolution, Vulkan will be a better choice. But sometimes CUDA can be a better choice since it's faster and but you can only run on lower resolutions. So it does not require an NVIDIA GPU. So step one, you want to download the Windows executable file. So you go here and it install it for you. And now you want to find a file directory that you want to have all your codes in. So I'm going to just create this new folder called real ESR can under my tutorial directory. And then I'm going to drag and drop this zip and then I'm going to extract this here. Okay. So after that finished extracting, let me delete this and rename this to real ESR can master. So you go in and you can see all these files here. And next, if you want to just run through images, then you're basically all set. All you need to do is to open up your Windows prompt and then you copy this file path and then CD and then paste your path, change your disk if you're on a different disk and then copy this line here and paste it. You see that um, these brackets, we need to replace this into the image that you want. So it's input.jpg, I remember. So. Now you see here, it's going to generate here. It's going to generate your output here. And this is the enlarged version scaled up. And this is if you want to run on a single image because yeah, it's pretty straightforward. That's it. But if you want to run on a video, uh, it'll be slightly difficult. So here, here's how you do it. You basically go up here and click on this func.py to roll and then save as and then you save this file and then you go back uh, to that page. You do also install Anaconda, which is pretty straightforward. Download and then I'm not going to download it, everything on default. And then after that, you finish downloading it, um, you, oh wait, you need to drag and drop func.py into this folder. And then after you download Anaconda, you basically open it up. And then you want to key in uh, pip install OpenCV Python. I already have it in my base environment, so that's fine. And then basically you want FFM, FFM PEG. So I want to skip this since I already have a local copy of FFM PG in my environment. You guys have to do this. Don't skip like me. And now I'll create a folder called um, input underscore videos and you go to that folder and then you drag and drop your video here so it should be like this real esr again master input videos your video and now you just need to copy this line paste it here change to your video file name which is akira3.mp4 oh my bad we forgot to change file directory um so you want to make sure that it's pointing to the root. This is uh, the root that we want to set. So CD and change directory. And then we then copy this um, last line of code and then make sure that you don't type your video file name wrong. And if it's in different format, it will still work, but you just have to remember to not to type in MP4, probably instead N4V or whatever you use. Okay, now you press enter 
and then yeah, it will automatically run for you. Let's change this view to large icons. And now we're just gonna wait a bit. All right, now that's done. It was only three frames and it took pretty long. And the original dimension is 1080p. And yeah, um, QDAO cannot run anything above 1080p. You can only run maximum 720p. So that's why Vulcan sometimes is better, even though it takes like four times the time that QDAO runs. So the video will look like this um, here. It's only three frames, so you can't really see much, but yeah. Will automatically generate this um, video for you with this um, batch file and it was generated with um, this function.py and it will move all your finished results into this folder under the same video name so you can see here so remember to delete some of these folders because they're in png i think and they can take up a lot of spaces so keep in mind and yeah that's about it for the exe tutorial and I'm gonna move on to the Q dot and PyTorch. So what I'm gonna do here is that I'm gonna remove all these files here. So for the very first thing for Q dot and PyTorch, you need Anaconda. So if you don't have Anaconda, download here. Again, pretty straightforward default installation. You probably won't encounter any problems. So the first step is you want to make a copy of this um, repository. You can use, either use this command or you can download it manually with here. And you open up here and then click on do these drag and drop to the folder where you want all your um, real ESR again master stuff is under so this will be in my tutorial folder and yeah these are the files that's necessary for you to run next thing is you want to go to anaconda prompt op open it up so anaconda prompt here so it's basically the same thing. Um, you want to CD into this directory and paste it here. And then you have to change disk if you're on a different disk. And then you follow all these commands. Here you need to press yes. Press yes. Type yes. And then we got to activate the environment. So now we're going to set up this environment. So the next time you use it, you don't need to install these libraries again. So these are the libraries that are required and next time you want to use this envi environment you just need to activate it and go straight down to inference so mm -hmm, it's pretty convenient press yes okay while we're waiting in the meantime let's go here download pre-trained models so we go here you can download it i already have a copy so i'm not going to download it and you're going to move it to here experiments pre-trained models and then you want to move that file, then you want to move it to here. So it should look like this. You download this file and you put it here. And now we, that's okay, it's still taking quite a while downloading. All right, so now after this uh, PyTorch installation is done, we go to the next one. Pip install basic S CSR, basic SR, not CSR. You're gonna get a lot of red things, but I think it's gonna be fine. And last one, we're gonna go through pip and so dash r requirements.txt. Um, yeah, I think this one can be ignored. So basically, we are done. And then we can start testing um, images on CUDA. So, what you need to do is to move the images that you want into the input folder. So, you can here see input. So, you can just put any images in here. There we have provided examples. Let me just delete them and. So this is the beach one. So yeah, you drag and drop images into the input folder. You can have multiple images and it'll all work. So you copy this line and you click on here and then you paste it. And then you can see testing zero input two. And then now it's done, it's so fast. I mean, it's probably because it's in low resolution too. So you can, in the results, you can see here. This is the upscale version. You can see the artifacts and stuff, yeah. So yeah, that's it if you only want to try on images, but if you want to do on videos, you have to do something slightly more complicated. So you copy this line, conda install dash c conda forge f 7 peg, install that. And let's see, press yes. 
So after this finished installing FFmpeg, uh, you go back to your base folder and then you drag and drop the video that you want to use. So I'll be using this one. And then you copy this line, uh, paste it here, and then you gotta replace all those um, brackets to your inputs. So my will be spike.mp4, and then the video name will be spike. And then you press enter. And then now if you go to input, it should be there. Yeah, one, two, three, there are only three frames. So, and we can now run it, oh, we can delete this. And then, so we can have one less to run. So you have to keep in mind, you need to make inputs clean. So you paste it here. All right, now that's done. You can go to results. So the next and last thing you need to do is copy this line of command, paste it here. Oh, and then replace the brackets part again. Here it's gonna be spike. So spike, and then you have to type in percentage D and then underscore out. There we go, dot PNG. And then FPS is gonna be your original video's FPS. So you have to go back and check what's the FPS of your original video. Right click properties and you can see details. 25 fr frames per second, so it should be 25 here. And then here, we're gonna change this to our video name again. And now that's done, press enter. I'll edit this to make it easier later. So it will be like this. Oh, you can't even see three frames, man. <laughs> there's, there's literally no difference. <laughs> But yeah, I'm pretty sure it's three different images. All right, it is three different images, but they just the same frame. But okay, yeah, that's about it for this um, installation tutorial. If you like what I'm doing, you can consider supporting me on my Patreon or YouTube. And thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to head over to my Discord channel and I'll try my best to reply to you there. And I'll see you guys in the next one.